Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion of the three different types of smart pointers, focusing in on weak pointers. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So what I've got here on the left side is a familiar example if you've been following the series, first discussing shared pointer. And in order for us to talk about weak pointers today, we should really just refresh shared pointers a little bit. So let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see on the screen what we did last time. So I briefly created a user defined type and just have a constructor, which is called whenever we create a user defined type here, which is this class name and a destructor, which is the function that is automatically called whenever we leave the scope or destroy this object otherwise. And again, we're going to get to classes later on in the series. So this might be a new concept for folks, but just hang in there with this idea. And then in our main program, we created two shared pointers. The first, which was within this block scope here at line 15, we made our shared pointer, which is equivalent of allocating some new object on the heap. It's just being managed by or within this shared pointer class here. Then what we did is created another shared pointer, but we shared, well, whatever pointer one was. And remember in shared pointers, this effectively increased the reference count because shared pointers were a reference counted pointer, which basically means whatever memory was allocated for this object here, now that we have two objects pointing to it, we shouldn't free this actual memory here until well, that reference count is zero, which will happen once we leave the scope of both of these blocks here from line 15 to 28. Okay, so just to prove that, we went ahead and printed out the use count and we're able to see the pointers here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rerun this example so you can see in the code here what happened with our shared pointer example. And you can see the use count was two within this block here and then the use count one within this block here. And maybe I'll show it this way so you can see just a little bit easier uh, what was going on when we printed out the use counts here. Okay, so if that's a shared pointer, what exactly is a weak pointer then? So let's go ahead and go to the drawing board just to talk about this a little bit. So the idea of a weak pointer is that it is a sort of smart pointer or it's sort of acting like a shared pointer, but it's not reference counted. In fact, let's go ahead and get a clear definition here in that we have that a smart or excuse me, uh, this type of smart pointer, a weak pointer is a smart pointer that holds a non owning reference. So basically all that means is it's a non owning pointer and it does not increase the reference count. So you might be thinking, why would we do this? And if you've watched some of the videos in the series, you've learned about things like dangling pointers, for instance. So that would be the idea if I have some pointer that I've created here and it's assigned to some block of memory, which I'm just going to uh, visually represent here. And then I have some other pointer two that also points to this memory. If I free pointer one, which would effectively delete this block of memory, any access to pointer two, say if I'm accessing one of these uh, blocks of memory here would cause a problem because, well, we have deleted this. So effectively we're still pointing to uh, with our pointer two, a block of memory that has been deleted. And again, there can be other problems that arise. But in the case of a weak pointer, since we're not increasing the reference count here, this means that, well, with our shared pointers, which got freed or destroyed, and again, I'll go ahead and bring up our output here, where this type that we created is effectively destroyed, we could still have dangling references. <laughs> but in a way, if you want to think of it, weak pointers are going to allow this to be OK. So let's go ahead and just convert this example from instead of using a shared pointer here to a weak pointer, just to show that the reference count does not, in fact, increase. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, and let's bring up our documentation so we can see weak pointer here and how we create a weak pointer is I'm just going to go to line 21 here and make this a weak pointer. 
And then let's go ahead and recompile this. And I'll go ahead and rerun this. And let me go ahead and make this a little bit larger just so you can see everything. And this time observe that our use count is one here. And just to make this again very clear, this is going to be inside the scope. And then you can just see that this first time that we uh, print it out here, again, the reference count has not been increased here like it previously was with the shared pointer. Okay, so that effectively means that I could have a bunch of weak pointers to some shared pointer and, well, I could have all of these sort of uh, dangling references here as shown here. But this might not be a bad thing. And again, let me try to motivate why you might want to use a weak pointer a little bit and investigate this concept further in your code. So the idea here, one of the major use cases is this ability to break cycles, which is described in the documentation here. So the idea would be, and let me go ahead and just highlight uh, the sort of why here. So I'll say it's a safer way to have dangling pointers. Okay, and I'll explain a little bit about what safer means and a way to break and let me write this a little bit neater, cycles in your code. So for example, if I had a shared pointer here, shared pointer one, and it pointed to shared pointer two, and maybe shared pointer two also pointed to shared pointer three, which pointed to shared pointer one, or you had some sort of cyclic dependency here, the reference counts would effectively be increasing infinitely here. Uh, or this could be a way to sort of get yourself into trouble in a loop or whatever. So the idea here is since we're not increasing the reference count, we could eventually destroy these objects here because we would instead have weak pointers here where maybe shared pointer one would be a weak pointer to some other shared pointer two here. And then we could effectively refactor this a little bit so that we break the cycle here. Okay, so that's the idea. So another sort of more pragmatic use case, I sometimes think about this um, since I do a lot of sort of gaming and these sort of things uh, for game development is let's say I had some object here and let's say, um, uh, let me draw it a little bit nicer here. And maybe this is a, a spaceship or something, and it's shooting projectiles at some other object in the world here. And this object eventually gets destroyed, and we want to not have to worry about this object here that we were targeting with these projectiles here. Okay. So the idea would be if I was writing this in code is maybe what I'd be doing is checking for each of these projectiles, is it colliding with this object here that I'm circling? And if this object doesn't exist, well, then it's essentially been maybe deleted or freed or something in the actual game. Now in the game, likely we would be just marking this as inactive or some other status. But again, the idea would be that we could just hold on to weak pointers to this particular object for each of these objects, checking if there was a collision detection with some other object that exists or has been allocated as, say, a shared pointer. Okay, so maybe that's another sort of loose example where you might think about where this would be okay. Now, there are some helpful functions that you might want to use. You can certainly use weak pointers, just like regular pointers, checking for null, but there's also this handy expired, so you can check if the reference object has already been deleted or not. And that can be a way, again, to safely check if you still have a reference to some memory that has been allocated. Okay, so let me go ahead and just bring up the example and I'll go ahead and wrap this up so you can just go ahead and see what is going on. Uh, and let me go ahead and um, update the comments <laughs> so that is reflective of what a weak pointer is doing. So uh, in summary, our reference count is not updated with a weak pointer here. Okay, and that's the difference between the shared pointer. Now, just to go a little bit further, let's go ahead and see how that expired value is. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is declare my weak pointer up here. 
outside of the scope of our block scope here. And I'll still assign it to pointer two. So let me go ahead and just uh, run this again. And so you can see the code and see that it works. And again, the reference is not being updated here. But let's go ahead and see from our weak pointer, which again is outside of the scope from lines 16 to 29 now. And let's go ahead and check. So I'm just going to do a uh, printout here. And we'll say is weak pointer uh, object that it points to valid. And we'll go ahead and just print this out with, well, pointer two is our weak pointer and dot expired. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, check this out here. Uh, oops, I have one extra uh, output uh, stream here. And let's go ahead and give that a try. That looks good. And we can go ahead and see is weak pointer uh, that the object it points to valid. And we get a uh, one here indicating that it has in fact expired here. So let me go ahead and make this output just a little bit uh, more clear for folks. Uh, just so you can see. Let's give an end line here. And because the object, again, is expired, that is in particular this pointer one, which is the shared pointer that we've created. We have referenced it here. And pointer one will go out of scope at, well, the end of this curly brace from which it was declared here. Okay, so within these lines. All right, so now we could either reassign this pointer or safely not do anything or refer to the memory here. All right, folks, so I hope that was a useful lesson on weak pointers with some practical examples of how you might use it in perhaps a gaming context or in other words to break cycles. And now you know about the three types of smart pointers in modern C++ 11 and beyond. So the current recommendation these days is to use these smart pointers Perhaps if you need some performance or interfacing directly with a C library, that might be a reason why you would just use raw pointers. But again, I recommend or would encourage these smart pointers as the default, unless you can uh, otherwise justify the use case of a raw pointer or are building some other wrapper around it, such as your own smart pointer. Anyways, folks, I'm looking forward to some more awesome lessons in the future, so make sure that you don't miss those lessons and hit the like and subscribe button and comment below if you have any questions about weak pointers. All right, take care, folks.